Today I want to share with you a chicken soup recipe using chicken bone broth that's wonderful for keeping you and your family healthy during cold and flu season, but it's delicious any time of year. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferments, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Today I'm so pleased to be participating in a chicken soup collaboration with two lovely ladies, Tashi from Simply Tashi and Denise from This and That with Denise. And they're both going to be making wonderful chicken soup recipes. And I'll be sure to link to their channels below in the description and here in the iCard. So be sure to head over and visit them. This is a very simple recipe that'll give you the basic building blocks so that you can go on to customize it any way you want. And I'll put the full recipe at my website, marysnest.com, and I'll also put a link to it down in the description below, the direct link that can take you right to it where you can print it out. Now what you wanna do is get yourself a nice big pot, and in it, I've put in one tablespoon of butter and one tablespoon of olive oil, and I'm just gonna bring that up to a medium heat. Once that comes up to temp, we're gonna add one chopped onion. You can use any kind of onion you want. This is just a plain yellow onion, and I've just diced it, nothing fancy, and you can customize this and cut the onions and the vegetables to any size that you like. But what I've done is I like to make this kind of a chunky soup. So I've cut my carrots and I've cut my celery to fairly good, good sized pieces and I'll take a picture and overlay them for all of these. But that's what I like to do. So, and it's sort of the basics. I've got my onion, my carrot, and my celery. And the next ingredient that you're going to need is some chicken. We are making chicken soup after all. And why I love this recipe is this is one of those recipes where you're basically using up everything from the chicken so that nothing goes to waste. I love to roast a chicken and I have a number of videos on different chickens that I've roasted, which I'll be sure to put the link in the iCards and in the description below. And what I've done here is get off every little last bit of chicken off the carcass of, of my chicken and shredded it as finely as I could and to make it go as far as I can when it comes to serving it. And it's about maybe a cup and a half, uh, two cups. It's not a precise measurement. Don't worry about it. This is almost in a way you can think of it as uh, the third meal, so to speak, um, when you roast a chicken. You can have your roast chicken as your first meal. Your second meal can be any leftovers that you might have. And then your third meal is a soup that you make after you've removed every little last bit off that chicken. And the final ingredient that you're gonna need is about eight cups of bone broth. As I said in the beginning, I'm making this chicken soup with bone broth because I wanna make it extra nutritious. And I also, again, talking about getting the most out of my roast chicken, I like to make bone broth using my roast chicken. And I have videos on a number of roast chicken bone broths in the slow cooker, on the stovetop, in the Instant Pot, and I'll be sure to link to whatever I can up in the iCards, but I'll also put that, uh, I'll put the links in the description below uh, so that you can make uh, chicken bone broth if you've not done that yet. And what I love about it is nothing goes to waste. That carcass might have otherwise gone into the garbage, but instead you can make bone broth and then you can make the soup. Now you can certainly use chicken broth uh, that you've purchased or maybe just a light chicken broth that you've made at home uh, that wasn't particularly bone broth. But if you have roasted a chicken and you've got that carcass, I highly recommend making chicken bone broth from it. It's very nutritious, very healing to the gut. Uh, this is coming up to temp. And it's wonderful for your hair, your skin, your nails. And especially during cold and flu season, the more we can nourish our gut, the better off we are. Because the more nourished gut we have, the better we are at fending off illness. Well, this has come up to temp now, and I'm just gonna go ahead and, oh, a nice sizzle. I always love that. I'm gonna go ahead and put that onion in and just toss that around 
in the butter and olive oil mixture and just let it soften slightly, two, three minutes. Now when that's softening, I just want to go over um, some thoughts about seasoning. Uh, usually I'll just start with something very basic, some salt, and then over here I've got about a half a teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper and about an eighth of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. My husband enjoys it to be a little spicy, so always add a little red pepper flakes. You can certainly leave that out. You can even leave out the black pepper too. Now that's the basic seasoning. Now there's a lot that you can do with this soup. If you want to go ahead and add garlic, especially if you do have a cold or a flu, you can do that. Uh, I recommend adding it in after you soften the onion and then just saute it for another minute or two before you proceed with the recipe. You can add some grated ginger, which is exceptionally nice this time of year. You can add different spices that you might want. Uh, you could add some turmeric, uh, coriander, cumin, anything that you want. This is very flexible. Something I like to add is my vegetable bouillon. And I have a video where I show you how to make this homemade. And again, I, I think I'll run out of high cards, but I'll definitely put it in the description below if you're interested in that. I love making this and, if I, and I love using it. It one, adds a wonderful flavor to soup, stews, anything that you want to make. And you can even put some in a teacup, add some boiling water, and you have a wonderful uh, instant bouillon to enjoy. And there's lots of wonderful vegetables added in here. But you also make this using salt. So if I use this, then I don't add in any extra salt because this adds plenty of salt to the recipe. And something I wanted to share with you, this is the same thing. This is my vegetable bouillon. And all I've done here is dehydrate it and made it stable to put on my pantry. This is fresh and I keep in my fridge or the freezer. That's the nice thing about this, you can put this in the freezer and it really extends the life of it uh, because it doesn't freeze hard. You can just take it out of the freezer whenever you want to use some. It doesn't freeze very hard uh, because of all the salt in it. Um, but then you can go ahead and dehydrate it if you want and you can do uh, you can dehydrate this in a dehydrator or in the oven And again, I, I have a video showing you how to do that But I'm going to use some of this vegetable bouillon today. I think I'll use some of the dehydrated one I I love the flavor that this adds and so if you have that uh, So you know if you've made that with me certainly use some of that today uh, you you can use uh, vegetable bouillon that you buy at the grocery store but sometimes that I, I don't generally use that because sometimes that does have uh, chemicals in it or MSG and things that I don't really want to add to our food uh, so I prefer to make my own and it's so easy to make and that can really be a clean out the crisper project if you have some vegetables that are just sort of reaching their prime uh, or a little past their prime uh, that can be a wonderful uh, wonderful project to really clean out your crisper and make a wonderful vegetable bouillon and then you never have to buy it again well, these onions are nice and soft. I'm going to go ahead and add in my black pepper and my red pepper flakes and just swirl that around. I'll take a picture and show you how the onions look and I'll overlay it so you can get a feel, you know, for the color and the, the uh, softness of them. But really, two, three minutes, it doesn't take long. You don't need to brown them. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in, I'm going to start with just about a teaspoon of my dried bouillon here. And that is going to really give it a nice uh, flavor. And then at the very end, when we go to taste it, if we feel it needs a little extra salt, we can always add it then. Basically what I've got here is about two stalks of celery chopped up and about two or three carrots. What I try to do is get about the same amount of carrots and celery. Again, you know, this is just the basic recipe. This is very flexible. And I go ahead and I use everything. I put in the uh, leaves from the top of the celery, uh, but I do peel the carrots. Uh, but other than that, everything goes in and just about the same size. So now that those onions are softened and I've got the spices in there, or the seasonings, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the carrots, and then I'll go ahead and add in the celery, and I'll turn all of that around and let everything soften a little bit. So I just let those soften for like a minute or two, just to 
uh, mix in nicely with the seasoning and just give them a chance to warm up a bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add in my shredded chicken. Now I'm just gonna mix that all around with the veggies. And again, I'll overlay a picture so you can see exactly what this looks like. But I just like to let the chicken absorb also, you know, a little bit of the seasoning that I've added uh, just to get the flavors melding nicely and uh, what was the word I'm looking for? Like, <laughs> just mixed throughout. Okay, now I've got my bone broth here, my chicken bone broth. It's about eight cups. And this I find makes for a, a nice serving for four for dinner. I like to allow two cups of broth per person. But you could get six servings out of this as well if you, you know, have a side salad and some bread, uh, which even if I... Uh, have the full eight cups here and I'm just serving four I still like to have uh, be able to serve you know bread and salad with it as well but you can definitely extend it if you want to serve six now I'm going to bring this up to a boil and once I get this up to a boil I'm going to turn it down to low and let it simmer a good 15 minutes. And at that point I'll check and I'll see how the vegetables are. If you tend to like them a little on the softer side, you can go up to 30 minutes. If you like them just with a little bit, you know, uh, as we say with pasta al dente, then 15 minutes, this should be ready. But we'll just bring it up to a boil and we'll, then we'll turn it down to low. We'll put the lid on and we'll come back and check it. Well, this has been simmering for about 15 minutes on low, so we'll take the lid off and give it a taste test. But I just wanted to mention one thing. If you find that you start making a lot of bone broth and you think, oh my gosh, I can't consume it as quickly as I'm making it. Maybe your freezer is full or your fridge or whatever the case may be. You can also dehydrate bone broth. That's what I have here. This is beef bone broth actually and it dehydrates beautifully in the oven or in a dehydrator. And then when you wanna make a soup like this and you, you wanna use some dehydrated bone broth, boom, you can literally have it ready in no time. And this also uh, is wonderful if you just want a cup of bone broth. You can put a tablespoon of this into a mug, add eight to 12 ounces of hot water, and you've got a, a wonderful mug of bone broth. Well, let's take this lid off and give this a taste. I've got a clean spoon here. I'm gonna to try to get a piece of the carrot and a piece of the celery along with the broth to see if I've got enough seasoning in there and also if the vegetables are the way I like. Okay, let's give it a taste. Mmm, mmm. Oh, that's so delicious. With vegetable bouillon really gives it a wonderful flavor. It's perfectly seasoned. It doesn't need any more salt. And the vegetables are just where I like them. They have a little bit of, you know, al dente-ness, <laughs> if that's a word, to them. And that's perfect. Now, depending on what size you've cut your vegetables, so on and so forth, you may want to go a little longer if you like them really soft. But I think about 15 minutes is going to be perfect. And boom, dinner's ready. Now I want to show you some ways that I like to serve this soup. I don't add grain or pasta to my soup unless I know that it's all going to be eaten at one sitting. Because if the grain or the pasta is in the soup and there are leftovers, the soup tends to, or the grain or the pasta tends to absorb the liquid from the soup and make it somewhat of a big mushy mess uh, and with very little broth left over. And it makes the grains and the pasta often too soft and not as nicely palatable as they should be. So what I like to do is cook my grains or my pasta separately and then put them in the dish like this. What I've got here is a lovely mixture of barley and farro and oat groats. Yes, you can even cook up oat groats and add them to soup. Uh, and I've got some brown rice in here and some kamut. If, if you're not familiar with that, it's a very lovely ancient grain. And these have been soaked and sprouted and then cooked. 
And the reason I do that is to make them more digestible, the soaking and the sprouting process. And if that's something you'd like to uh, learn about, how to do if, if that's not something you've done yet. And it's very easy. Uh, it takes very little time on your part and it makes the grains much more digestible. And I'll be sure to put a link in the description below or in the iCards or both, depending if I have room in the iCards. But it's very easy to learn how to soak and sprout grains. So that's what I've got here. They've been soaked, sprouted and cooked. And I'm, I, what I do then is I just put as much as I want in the bowl and this, I'm going to be very generous. This bowl's for my husband. We're getting ready to enjoy this for dinner. <laughs> and I just put it in right like that. And then, and this is room temperature. It's already been cooked and it's just been waiting for the soup to finish. And so, uh, but the soup will warm it right up. Then I'll get a nice ladle of the soup and I'll just pour that right over the grains. Ah. That looks lovely. Look at that beautiful soup. I'll take a picture so, because I can't really slant it, so that you can see it overhead. Well, I hope you'll give this very easy chicken soup recipe a try and be sure to make it your own. And if you'd like to learn more about traditional nutrient dense cooking, be sure to subscribe to my channel and then click on this video over here where I have a short playlist that'll show you how to make chicken bone broth in the Instant Pot, in the slow cooker, or on the stovetop. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.